I'm just getting a really bad attack of office envy. Oh, oh, good, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm Lucy Kellaway, and for over 20 years, I've written about offices. And for longer than that, I've worked in them. I wanted to take a closer look at the new generation of cool offices, where every last detail has been engineered to make the people who work in them more productive and happier too. It's a bit Ikea. The beard straighteners, that is very, very <laughs> messy. It's not complete privacy because you can always just sort of... It looks like a sort of NHS hospital. It's quite strict. From iPad coffee machines... You can oh my change God! With ...to free ones. lunches... Well, I suppose I'll have to put up with the Ben & Jerry's. ...from hot desking... To modern art, is any of this making offices better? <gasps> I want this in my office. <laughs> or is it making them worse? So you could have me in my pajamas on the screen. Central working is part of the new co-working craze. It's a place where different companies can all rent a space for their employees who sit together all day working hugger-mugger. It runs five different offices, or clubs as it calls them, one of which is in Groovy Shoreditch, where else? Where I went to meet the company's co-founder, James Layfield. I was expecting that offices like this would be crammed with the cool youth from startups who are too poor, too new, and expanding too fast to have offices of their own. But as I could see from their board of clients, not all were exactly hip. This feels very groovy with the sort of warehousey windows and the concrete and the wood and the artwork. Um, I, it looks like a lot of effort has gone into making the vibe right. Absolutely, we, put, we pour love into the spaces. It was really interesting, when we first started, the concept of this sort of way of working didn't exist. And so we manufacture all of our furniture. So nothing here you can buy in a shop. We've manufactured it all with UK producers. Central Working was set up four years ago and offers three different sorts of membership. At the most basic are explorers who get a choice of seats in the open work area and are only allowed to stay there for a fixed amount of time. Then there are locals who get their own desks and can work around the clock if they want to and natives who are at the top of the chain and are allowed their own private office space. So think of it a little bit like a gym for your business rather than for your muscles and therefore you probably use it a little bit more than you and would And so I assume if you're an explorer that's the cheapest thing to be, is it's it? It's super low cost, £99 a month gets you access to all of our locations but it's not just about the space, it gets you access to the team. So each of our sites has a GM and also um, an assistant that works with them. And, and by GM, you mean general manager, not genetically modified? They are sometimes genetically modified, yeah. but mostly <laughs> they are general managers. Um, and their job is to basically look after you. We recruit people from the hospitality industry. We see ourselves as a hospitality business, and our hospitality proposition is helping you to grow the business. It turns out that hospitality doesn't mean waiters running around with menus, but instead it's about matchmaking. Part of the job of the office manager is to spot two businesses that might benefit from getting to know each other. A sort of assisted serendipity. Can we go and look at the kitchen? Because in my experience, these sorts of moments all happen over food. And so do people behave here like in a sort of student house? I mean, they don't seem to because it all looks very sort of clean and tidy. And what's nice about it is, whereas perhaps sometimes in a student house, um, people take people for granted, there's a level of respect here because people are part of a community. They know each other, they're professionals, they're here to do business. But apart from the kitchen, the other place where people bond in offices are in the loos. Um, and I've heard rumours that your loos are quite special, um, that there are beard straighteners in the gents. Is that true? You've got to consider these guys are basically in business to do well. And so sometimes that means looking your best. So be it a man or a woman, sometimes the hair straighteners just have to happen. I mean, practically all the guys out there do have beards, as you do yourself. I mean, there's a very young vibe to it. So let's see the beard straightness then. <laughs> I think they're this way. They're in the men's loose. It's okay. off limits. Okay. Anyone in the loo? As you would oh, expect. Oh, there we the go. Straightness, but also, there we go. the hairdryer. The hairdryer and the beard, uh, the beard straightness. That is very, very creepy. <laughs> Fantastic. Otherwise, you've got a pretty standard kind Otherwise, of a loo. Otherwise, normal loo. Yeah. After the loo, I went in search of some of these natives. 
and found them behind a closed office door, which seems rather against all the serendipitous spirit that central working is supposed to be about. So you're natives in there, we're, hiding we're, away? We're natives hiding away in there, yeah. But Will, who runs a financial services company, says it has to be that way. Some work is confidential. And do you ever come out and sort of make the community? Sometimes we do, yes. When people knock on the door and allow us to come out, yes, we do, we do come out and we kind of... Um, uh, clients also kind of use the, the shared space as well. I think where it's really helped us is around um, resourcing. So, you know, particularly finding skills and capabilities within within the team, within the teams that work here. Do you know your next door neighbours? So we know, we know some of our next door neighbours, we know some of the guys downstairs. Yeah. There's a great space outside as well. Do you feel the sort of hip vibe is being imposed on you? Yeah, I'm just going to say yeah. that you're not I mean, really... I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, I would have dressed up yeah. lately, but I, I'm literally about to dash off to a meeting in the city, so that ordinarily you would find me looking very, very different, but, you know, this is um, absolutely... We are slowly sort of uh, getting ourselves immersed in that culture. Was the young vibe too much, I wondered? Would it put grown-ups off? James explained that they've got five sites, all of them different, and members can use any of them depending on their mood. So if they want to feel grown up, they can work in the newest site on the border of the City of London, where the decor is more sober and almost everyone is in a suit. But here in Shoreditch, I spot something that I really like. So here we've got the latest in desk fashions, the stand-up desk, uh, if you're near a fan. But what I really like is the open window. It's so unusual to find open windows in offices. Absolutely. I mean, we want to keep it light and fresh, obviously. And it's so much nicer for people to have really fresh nice. air coming in. I think the hash plant underneath is enjoying the fresh air A too. relaxing afternoon with the windows open. Downstairs in the courtyard, I'd expected to find the usual huddle of office refugees having a quick cigarette. But instead, I found people sitting at tables in what is really rather a nice little garden, having meetings and getting on with their work. We think the office as a concept is no longer what it was, and that's why we've created Central Working. It's about giving you the right space to do the right sort of business. Um, and by giving people lots of different ways of working, they find what's right them, for them. So as Will said, sometimes he wants privacy and he wants a bit of secrecy, but he also needs that community and that support. So we try and give them that balance. And, and on the other side of this chimney, you've got Google, yes? Yeah? So that you can sell your, sell your young business to Google just... Um three inches away from Absolutely. you. Absolutely. This man's just done, popped out the door, walked into Google. Yeah. Now that is how to do a new business meeting. What would you say was the main difference between an office where everyone <coughs> works for the same employer and an office where nobody does? So I suppose there's a few things. The first thing is our guys know each other. It's quite common in a big office that the person who sits three desks away, you haven't got a clue it is. These guys get to know each other and they help each other. And there's a sort of sense of openness around this community and a supportiveness. Everyone is here to do well. Everyone is here to do their best. In a normal office, people trudge in, sit down, log on, headphones on, and it's just depressing and sad. This is not a depressing and sad environment. This is a beautiful environment that gives people the chance to thrive. You're also not in competition with the person who you're sitting next to either, and maybe that helps. Potentially, and that's what's lovely. Even though some of these guys are in competition, there's a really beautiful collaborative nature to it that, despite that, we work now in an economy of super niches. So whereas you might be in financial technology and you might be in financial technology, the odds are if you're in one of our clubs, you're not doing the exact same thing and you might be able to help each other. And we've seen that time and again. James, I take your point that you're trying to help your clients grow, but you're not really helping your bamboo plants grow very well because they're desperately in need of water. Yeah, that's true. Sorry about that. We focus more on these guys than these guys. I left Central Working quite impressed. I could be mean and point out that the trendy decor was a bit predictable and trying a bit too hard, and that the chairs weren't that comfy, which is a problem if you sit in them all day. But the place had daylight and fresh air and a great courtyard, and it would really be rather a nice place to come to and sit all day with your laptop. And if you think that the alternative for a lot of these companies is working from home or in cafes, this strikes me as wildly superior. The only problem was the lack of buzz. Lots of the desks were empty. And in a way, that could be quite nice as it means you can get stuff done. But when you think that the point of being in an office rather than at home is that you see other adults, it's a major drawback. There simply weren't enough of them there to suit me.
do notice that the most important guy does get the best view. I think this is too quiet. It's like an old-fashioned phone booth. I think that's absolutely fascinating about dress. The kids would fit right in with the primary school <laughs> colours. But why does it need to be fun because in the end it's work? <laughs>